Well, hey everybody and welcome back to my kitchen or welcome if you're new. My name is Bethany or Budget Bethany and welcome to this week's What's for Dinner video. So I like to share these every single week in hopes to give y'all some inspiration to cook at home for your family as well. This week I'm going to be sharing two super easy crock pot dinners and a soup. Up first, we're going to be making crock pot smothered pork chops, and then I had mashed potatoes and sweet peas for my sides. So right here are my pork chops, and I'm using ribeye chops. They are boneless. And then you'll also need several cans of cream of whatever. So I've got cream of celery, cream of potato, cream of mushroom, and some broccoli cheese soup. But you can mix and match that. You can add whatever kind of cream of whatever you want into yours, but this is what I'm adding into mine. And you'll also need some chicken broth, and then those are my seasonings that I'm going to season up my pork chops with. So right here, I'm just placing the pork chops into my crock pot. I'm going to season them up first. So of course I've already showed y'all my seasoning. I'm just using some garlic salt, some onion powder, and some Lowry seasoning salt. But of course you can season your pork chops with whatever kind of seasonings you prefer. I do season mine on both sides, but you could just sprinkle in some seasoning in there and it wouldn't really matter. But I like to make sure I get mine good and seasoned. Then once I have all my pork chops seasoned how I like them, I'm going to go in with some chicken broth and you do like, or I do like to add a generous amount of chicken broth just because I'm always so crazy about my crock pot being on while I'm away from home. So I want to make sure that it has enough juice in there that it's not going to burn or anything, but you do not want to add too much in there because then your gravy will be watery. So now I'm just opening up all my cans of cream ofs and then we're just going to dump those in there and then we'll just kind of mix it up, make sure all the pork chops get good and coated. Then we're just going to pop the lid on it and cook it on low for five to six hours or you can cook it on high for about two to three hours so here is how it looked once i came home uh y'all are getting the first glimpse as i'm seeing it y'all are seeing it so this is how it was whenever i opened the crock pot when i come home um it doesn't look very appetizing and like i said if you do add too much liquid your gravy will be watery and as you can tell i did add a little bit too much to mine but I was fine with it because I did not want anything to scorch in that crock pot while I was gone. But here's my plate all fixed up with mashed potatoes and sweet peas on the side. For the next night, I'm going to be making some crock pot chili. So to start with, I'm just going to brown up my ground beef in my pan. And I'm going to add in some of this minced onion because my family does not like, like fresh onions or real onions. And I'm also going to sprinkle in some of this seasoning salt just to give it a little bit of flavor. And then for my canned goods, I'm going to add in a little can of tomato sauce and I'm going to add in a can of Van Camp's pork and beans and it's in tomato sauce. And if you've never tried these in your chili, I highly recommend them. They're it's so good in your chili. I'm also going to add a can of light red kidney beans and two cans of chili beans. And I was kind of on the fence if I was going to add both or not, but I do wind up adding both. And then a can of diced tomatoes and some chili ready tomatoes, which there really isn't much difference, but I just wanted to be extra i guess i don't know so in my crock pot i'm going to add in all of my canned goods and then i'll add in my ground beef I'm 
so sorry that the angle is so bad y'all but this was early in the morning before i went to work so i just had to hurry and get everything in the crock pot so i could get out the door but i wanted to film it so that i could share it with y'all so i'm sorry for the bad angle at least i did get it on camera for y'all so now that i've got all my canned goods added in there and i did add a little bit of water in there just so that it wouldn't be so thick I'm draining off the grease off my um, ground beef. I'm going to add in one packet of chili seasoning. This is optional. You don't necessarily have to do that because it's going to be good without the seasoning. But I just, like I said, I like to be extra sometime and I do like the flavor that it gives it. So I'm going to mix that up into my ground beef and then I'm going to dump that into the crock pot with the rest of my tomato sauce and my canned goods. All you have to do now is just make sure that all your ground beef gets evenly mixed into your chili um, tomato sauce and your beans and all that stuff. You know you want to evenly spread out in there. So you just pop your lid on there and you'll cook that on low for about five to six hours. And then this is what it will look like once you come home. I really wish I had used a crock pot liner because it took me forever to get this thing clean. But it was well worth it to finally have some chili. I just wish the weather had matched um the chili vibes because it's still pretty warm here in georgia but nonetheless i had chili and i wished i had some cheese and sour cream on top but of course i forgot that but now we have moved into the next dinner that i'm going to be sharing with y'all and it's actually a seafood chowder and also i actually have a separate video that i filmed for this and if you missed it i'll have it linked down below in my description box just so that you can go click on that link and it'll take you right to that video but basically a little quick breakdown i'm going to give y'all in this video basically all you have to do is wash and dash and peel your potatoes and then you're going to cover those with water and bring them to a bowl and once they're soft you'll remove them from the pot but leave your water in there then you'll go in with some evaporated milk some boiled oysters some half and half and some old bay seasoning And then just a few splashes of hot sauce, whatever kind of hot sauce you prefer, but I'm going to be using some Texas Pete in mine. And then I just throwed in some of the frozen shrimp that you can find at Walmart in the frozen section. And of course, like I mentioned earlier, if you want the full recipe for this video, I'll have that video linked down below so that you can go check it out. But here's how our soup looked once it was all done. And this is one of our favorite fall soups. I highly recommend y'all giving this soup a try. And I also wanted to say thank you all so much for being here today and watching today's What's for Dinner. If you did like this video, I hope you'll leave me a thumbs up. It just helps me out so very much. And if you're not already, I hope you'll hit that subscribe button so that you can keep on hanging out with us. And I'll catch you all in the next one. Bye, y'all.